Yeah, and just kind of Clint Kubiak, just, I'm sure you're still kind of digging into it a little bit, but just what's your reaction to, to him and kind of some of the stuff you've seen, at least from afar, like the Shanahan offense and that. How do you think it might suit you? Ladies and gentlemen, the New Orleans Saints offense might be exactly what we thought it was going to be under Clint Kubiak. Saints newly signed free agents Cedric Wilson and Xander Horvath may have confirmed what we all thought the Saints offense was going to look like. On top of that, you have guys like Alvin Kamara and Rashid Shahid showcasing their excitement for the hiring of Clint Kubiak as the offensive coordinator and for what the offense could possibly look like. The Saints offense really ever since 2019 has been outdated and not up to modern day standards for modern day NFL offenses. From 2019 to 2020, which was Drew Brees' last seasons, the Saints were limited to what they could do on offense due to the fact that Drew Brees and his shoulder was cooked and he couldn't really throw to certain parts of the field or go downfield. He could only throw so far which limited the ability to what the Saints could do, limited the passes Drew Brees could only throw so far so he relied on the short to intermediate plays and that's where guys like Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara came in. They're a huge reason why the Saints offense was so functional during the 2019 and 2020 season and they were also a huge reason why Drew Brees was able to play so long in his career. You could say that those two guys helped extend Drew Brees' career. Michael Thomas in the passing game dominated the short and middle of the field while Alvin Kamara took care of the running game and at the time he was also the best receiving back in the NFL. However, despite the limitations of Drew Brees, the Saints offense got significantly worse after he retired, which is obviously to be expected. But let's not forget that some Saints fans thought the team would be better offensively without Drew Brees because of his shoulder problems. They thought getting Jameis Winston or another quarterback who could throw downfield would make the Saints offense better without Drew Brees. I think it's safe to say that they were completely wrong about that. In the first season without Drew Brees, the 2021 offense was brutal. Jameis Winston and Sean Payton made the best out of a bad situation, but there was no talent at the receiver position and all of the injuries made it worse, especially at the quarterback position. And let's not forget that Sean Payton thought he could scheme guys open and wouldn't need talent, but in reality, he was so used to Drew Brees making guys look good that he forgot that talent is also part of the job when you don't have a Hall of Fame quarterback. This is why their receiving core in 2021 was so bad with Kenny Stills, Marquez Calloway, Trey Quan Smith, and Deontay Hardy. And of course, Michael Thomas missed that season due to a botched surgery on his ankle. After that season, Sean Payton would retire and Dennis Allen would take over as head coach going into 2022. And he was looking for a new offensive coordinator as Pete Carmichael had resigned. Dennis Allen and the Saints front office tried to get Liam Cohen from the Rams in the Sean McVay coaching tree, but ultimately they failed as Cohen went on to go and coach for Kentucky. So the Saints ended up bringing back Pete Carmichael, which was one of the biggest mistakes of the team over the past few seasons. The 2022 season was disgusting from Pete Carmichael. He didn't set guys up for success, utilize their strengths, and the scheme was simply outdated. Unless you have a Hall of Fame quarterback named Drew Brees, then the offensive system just simply won't work. For some reason though, Dennis Allen brought back Pete Carmichael in 2023, thinking that maybe it was the quarterback's fault that the team's offense was not so good in 2022. And after the team brought back Pete Carmichael, Derek Carr would come to New Orleans and he would actually say Pete Carmichael was a huge reason why he wanted to play for the Saints. So Pete Carmichael had a quarterback he could trust and a quarterback who fit the system that he was wanting to run and call. Carr had been in a very similar offense before and has had success in the same style of offense. But a Tiger doesn't change its stripes and you are who you are in the 2023 season for the Saints offense was the same story as the 2022 offense. No motion, no play action, terrible running scheme, not setting guys up for success, terrible situational play calling, third down and long run, first down and 10 passes, it was just terrible. In reality, the only difference between the 2023 and the 2022 Saints was the fact that the Saints were paying the quarterback position a lot more money like $150 million worth of more money for a minimal increase in quarterback play and production. So this last offseason, Dennis Allen and the Saints front office finally pulled the trigger and fired offensive play caller Pete Carmichael. And in his spot, they hired 49ers passing game coordinator Clint Kubiak to be their new offensive play caller. This new system should be a huge improvement to the Saints offense 
an offense that needs new life to get their playmakers the football in space and to allow them to play to their strengths while at the same time using modern day tactics like motion and play action. And we saw what the Saints offense did at the end of the season when they started using more play action and motion. Derek Carr looked better. The receivers, the tight ends, and the running game looked a lot better. Offensive line play looked better. Who would have thought? Now just imagine what the offense could possibly look like if they're doing that every game. The run scheme should be improved which should allow Alvin Kamara to be a lot better. There's arguments that Alvin Kamara is washed and that he has failed the Saints recently and is not worth that contract. And given what history has shown of running backs not being worth paying it as they get older, it's a fair argument. But I think it's the Saints that have been failing Alvin Kamara in terms of the scheme and utilizing him in the right play, not Kamara failing the Saints. Hopefully the Saints bringing in a new offensive staff should also help with the development of Trevor Penning. It surely can't make things worse. Penning has the athleticism at the offensive line position that fits the mold of what the Shanahan and McVay tree look for. It's just a matter of what can the Saints offensive staff now do to help him develop and figure out a plan for him moving forward. We are all hoping to see Kendra Miller, Chris Olave, A.T. Perry, and Rashid Shahid be utilized in a much better way as well and used to their strengths. More yards after the catch and getting guys open through the scheme as opposed to relying on the talent to do all of the work. Even with all of this talent at the skill positions, it still feels like the Saints are missing one more guy. A guy who can make physical contested catches, especially after the Saints lost to Michael Thomas in free agency. Whether or not this is addressed at wide receiver or tight end, it's something that needs to be answered come draft time. Now we can't truly know what the offense will look like until September, October-ish, but we can have expectations and have some hope for what it could possibly look like. I think when you hired Clint Kubiak from the 49ers, I think the expectation is that he was going to be running a very similar scheme in a very similar offense. However, what newly signed Saints free agent wide receiver Cedric Wilson and fullback Xander Horvath had to say about the new system should be words of hope and excitement for Saints fans. When they were asked in their press conferences why they signed with the Saints and not anywhere else, their answers should excite you and get your hopes up for the offense. So if you could start with why the Saints, what, what, what made this the right opportunity for you? Um, I mean, just looking over the, I mean, it fairly, happened fairly quickly actually, but um, just going through the whole process and the two days of the span that it took, um, it was just, I feel like it was just the right fit, um, knowing that they were gonna be running the same offense that I just ran in the previous two years. I think with that skill set kind of incorporated, I think I would have a, a good ability, you know, to kind of play a role similar to use check is the dream right there. That could be something too with Coach Kubiak and his offensive uh, role and how he does things. Kyle Shanahan or the Shanahan Kubiak mm -hmm. system, you know, you fit in that that mold. Yeah, that's that's one of the offenses I've been trying to get in my whole career. I think from what everyone has seen in the past too, they've been a successful team with that offensive scheme. So I think that could be an important role for me um, on the team. Those sound like words of encouragement and reassurance from players to the Saints fans. Cedric Wilson saying he wanted to be with the Saints due to them running a similar offense to the one he had been playing in the past two seasons is a big deal. He was on the Dolphins over the last two seasons, one of the more explosive and high-end offenses around the league and a system that works very well for Tua and a system that works very well in Tua's favor and everyone else's. And Mike McDaniel comes from the same tree that Clint Kubiak does from San Francisco. The Saints even have similar weapons to the Dolphins. Chris Olave could be Jalen Waddle, Rashid Jahid could be Tyreek Hill. A.T. Perry and Cedric Wilson are the slot guys who Cedric Wilson was for the Dolphins. Now something both of these teams are missing is a big physical pass catcher and a very good tight end. And since we're on the topic of this, Tyreek Hill has actually been recruiting Michael Thomas to the Dolphins. I think that would be an awesome fit. Now as to what Xander Horvath said, when you look at what the 49ers offense has done with Kyle Uzcheck, he fits the mold of what that kind of fullback does in this system. He's the guy who can make catches, run the ball well, hurdle, break tackle, stiff arms, and block pretty good. Horvath will be competing with Adam Prentice for the starting fullback job, but Horvath really fits the 49ers and Dolphins type of offense more so than Adam Prentice. And if the plan is for Kubiak to have a Dolphins and 49ers like system, Horvath is the guy. He said himself he was looking for a system like this that can utilize him to his strengths and where he could be utilized as a weapon instead of a blocker. And the fact that Horvath said this says a lot about what the Saints offense could be cooking up. 
not only are the new guys chipping in on the Saints' new offensive system, but you have guys like Alvin Kamara and Rashid Shaheed excited about it. Alvin Kamara was harsh and honest about how he felt during the season when it came to the play calling in the offense. He voiced his frustrations. But after hiring Clint Kubiak, Alvin Kamara has got to be pretty happy and excited. Kamara even stopped by the Saints facility after the hiring of Clint Kubiak and they sat and met down for a little bit of time. Kamara has to be pretty excited about the possibilities this offense could provide for him after seeing what McCaffrey did in San Francisco last season. Then you have Rashid Shaheed who was doing work in the community just a few days ago and then he was asked and then he talked about the hiring of Clint Kubiak and what he sees the offense being. He said he's still learning the playbook but Clint Kubiak has a good plan in store for the team to get him and everyone else eating on the offense. Yeah, and just kind of Clint Kubiak just I'm sure you're still kind of digging into it a little bit, but just what's your reaction to, to him and kind of some of the stuff you've seen, at least from afar, like the Shanahan offense and that. How do you think it might suit you? Right. Yeah, no, he comes from an excellent family tree. Um, uh, a lot of success um, with him, and I'm super excited to work with him. Um, I feel like he's going to put us all into a position to, to succeed. And, uh, you know, talking to him, he, he has a, a good plan and um, a great guy, and I'm super excited to work with him. Um, that Kubiak will um, be able to, you know, kind of, uh, allow us to just play and, and be ourselves, um, you know, op open it up a little bit and we're all super excited. And the most important part is both of these systems in Miami, San Francisco, whatever it may be, both make the quarterback look good and Derek Carr is coming off a terrible season with the Saints and Clint Kubiak can find a way to shadow his flaws and make him look good, the Saints might actually have something to look forward to offensively. But we won't truly know what the offense looks like until September, but until then we can continue to be optimistic about what it could possibly look like. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Peace.